Hello, everybody. My name is Mike Belville, and we'd like to welcome you to Professional Insights, sponsored by Dementia Action Alliance. Today, we have the distinct honor of having Kate Swaffer. Kate Swaffer was actually chosen as one of 100 Women of Influence, a global leader of 2018 of Australia. She's an author, a human rights activist, an international speaker. She is a chair, CEO, and co-founder of Dimension Alliance International, a board member of Alzheimer's Disease International, member of the World Dementia Council. She's a PhD candidate from the University of South Australia, a retired nurse, Bachelor of Psychology, Bachelor of Arts, Professional and Creative Writing, and a retired chef, and the author of What the Hell Happened to My Brain? and the owner and producer of blog website, Creating Life with Words. Kate, we're really thrilled and honored to have you here. Welcome to our program. It's a pleasure to be here, Mike, and thank you for that lovely introduction. Well, we're really thrilled to have you, Kate. And I guess one of the first questions we'd like to ask you is, what made you decide to put yourself out there in the public and write about your life living with dementia and what were you actually hoping to accomplish by doing that? So, so when I first started blogging, uh, I had been diagnosed with a couple of different terminal diseases. Um, my children had said to me, hey, mum, why don't you write a book about, even though you might not want to publish it, but start writing about your life so that we know about your life in case you do die when they tell you you're going to die. Um, and then uh, my niece had given me a book about end of life and, you know, coming to grips with dying. And in it, it said, write a blog or write some memoirs. And I went, ah, oh, that's a bit narcissistic, really. I'm not going to bother with that. And then I watched the movie Julie and Julia about that famous American chef who wrote the cookbook for um, how to teach Americans to, to cook French food. And the young woman who wanted to be a writer who decided to cook every recipe from Julia's French cookbook. And, and I was like, hmm. There's a sign from, from the universe. I really should start a blog. And uh, um, I had been writing privately, uh, just in a Word document, um, about living with dementia. And it was clearly only for private consumption. And I had named the document, What the Hell Happened to My Brain? Um, because I had come from having a photographic memory, uh, a perfect memory almost of faces and names and a very high level of maths and English. And suddenly I couldn't add up and I couldn't spell that. So for me, it, w it was pretty complicated getting dementia, pretty annoying actually. Um, and so I started writing in this private blog and then it was really my niece in this last movie. So I thought, ah, oh, Maybe I'll open up a blog. So I, I went on to WordPress because another friend that I went to school with had a, a, a blog. And uh, I think I started it in the July, but it took me from July till September to work out how to post a blog. So I should have known you back then, Mike. It would have been very helpful. Um, so then I, I worked out how to post a blog and thought, Okay, I need to practice this. So I made myself a commitment to do a blog for a day, every single day for one year to get me in the habit and to help my memory retain how to write and post blogs. And I think what people who don't write blogs don't get is a blog is just a website. And I'd been using websites for years, but I hadn't been writing blogs that were published out to the public. And I think I was really naive when I started because I, even though it was a website, I didn't really understand that the rest of the world were going to read it. And um, the first few weeks, I had family and friends, about 16 of them, 
who I let know that I was doing it and uh, um, it suddenly, I suddenly realised that it had become almost like my memory bank but I still didn't twig back in the early days that it was public even though I, I mean theoretically I knew it was but I hadn't realised what a public blog might turn into and uh, my husband said to me you know it's really you writing that blog is really fantastic because every day while he's at work, he gets my blog and he reads what I've been up to or what I'm thinking or how I'm feeling about dementia. And so instead of when he come, he, what he used to come home from work and say, oh, hi, you know, hi, Kate, how was your day? What have you been doing? And some days I couldn't remember. So it was a bit of a like empty conversation. So then we could start talking about what I'd written on the blog and whether it was what I'd been doing that day or whether it was how I'd felt or whether it was, I don't know, something else, it gave us something to talk about. And then suddenly it became this global conversation tool and it's turned into a true global conversation. I mean, I've got well over a hundred thousand subscribers and Occasionally, one of my very original followers, um, I've got a, a, a chap in Western Australia whose dad died of dementia. He's from England. His family had told him not to come back to England to visit his dad. And then after his dad died, he felt really guilty that he hadn't been back to see his dad. So he still follows my blog and every now and then pops up with a comment oh, wow, that must be how my dad felt. And then there's this other guy um, somewhere in Australia whose wife had young onset dementia and she wouldn't talk to him about it. And she's still, I think she's still alive, but she's now in a nursing home. And he constantly pops up and says, oh, that must be how my wife felt. Or, you know, I wish she talked to me about that. I could have been a better husband, blah, blah, blah. So it kind of became this really interesting and useful conversation tool between people with dementia and our families. And then professionals started following it and academics and students and all sorts of other people. So, you know, it's got a pretty big audience now. Uh, and I watch blogging is... It's a bit out there because even though I make it clear that what I say on my blog is absolutely just my opinion, it's just how I feel today, I might change my mind tomorrow, um, people do pick on you. You know, like there's a few negatives about having a public online space. Um, and I watch new bloggers and usually at about the three month mark, uh, a new blogger who might have been getting lots of positive feedback suddenly gets a heap of negative feedback to the point where sometimes new bloggers give up blogging. So it toughens you up. It goes, oh, well, you know, it's just their opinion. Who cares? My blog's just my opinion. Who cares? And um, so is it kind of, in a way, I don't think I would have published a book had I not already been a blogger because it's pretty scary well, at least with a blog, I can suddenly make it private if I want to, or I can go in and edit it. But once you've got a book out there in the real world, there is no going backwards. You've, it's out there for everyone to see. And, you know, there were, I think in my first book, there were five grammatical errors, which weren't my mistake. They were the editor of the publishing company's mistake, but people picked on me for that. Had I not been through the negatives of blogging and having an online kind of space, I don't think I would have coped too well with any negative feedback on a book. So it's kind of healthy in a way. Um, it has its blogging does have drawbacks too. Um, but I, you know, I just think from my own perspective, it's been great for my family. It's been good for my friends and people with dementia and others tell me it's been helpful for them. So I don't do it very often anymore because I'm too busy, but um, when I do, it usually gets a fair bit of traction. So, 
you know, it's an interesting experience. Well, I, I really appreciate that. I was listening, obviously, what you're saying and the negativity part, um, having getting to know you personally and meeting you in person. Um, they don't know who they're messing with when they're, <laughs> when they're talking about cake swapper. So, well, do you know, folks out there right now. The, there's the occasional comment that is really nasty. Yeah. And initially I thought, oh, I shouldn't, because my comments that come in, I have to approve. And these days, sometimes because I might not be on my blog for more than a week at a time, people will think I haven't accepted their comments. So they send another comment and another comment and they're all the same. Um, so people are getting used to the fact that I'm not quite such a daily blogger, but um, mm, I forgot what I was going to say, Mike. <laughs> oh, I, I love dementia. About how they don't know who they're, who they're messing ah, with. So what I started to do was, well, stuff the negative comments. That's just someone's opinion. So I used to put them up. And then other followers would take them to task, not me. I didn't need to do anything. All I did was accept them and say, oh, that's thanks for your opinion or thanks for letting me know that's how you feel. Um, mm. And then other people would kind of, um, if it was particularly unkind, and there have been some particularly unkind ones, um, other people would actually take them to task. Well, I, my next question, you, and I think you've kind of partly answered it, but maybe you could expand on it a little bit, was, I mean, your, your writing depicts so much of your feelings and your passions. And I mean, how does it make you feel to put stuff like that, your emotions and all that out there? Is it like a, a release or therapy for you? Or uh, Well, I, I, before dementia um, and over my life, I have used writing uh f for healing and i first learned to do that from a psychologist after my long-term partner took his life when i was 27 um and that that for me much more than dementia ever could be that was an absolute sink or swim experience for me um it, it was you know i was 27 years old we'd been together six years and he took his life and I, you know, it took me 10 years just to get over the guilt of that. Um, and, and I think that I went to a psychologist for support and he suggested writing as therapy. And uh, in fact, he believed in it so strongly that on my third visit, when I still hadn't turned up with my daily journal, he said to me, I'll give you one more chance because if you don't start writing, it's a waste of your money and my time. That's how much this psychologist believed in the value of writing. Um, and then 12 months or 10 months after Dave took his life, I got involved in a very new organisation in South Australia that I then volunteered for for nine and a half years called the Bereave Through Suicide Support Group. And we were volunteers and, and I, I'm proud to say that group still exists in, a, in, a, in Adelaide and now there's lots of them around the world. Um, and because it was free and you know, a bit like DAI, you can't tell somebody how they have to live their life. But for those people who were grieving, who took the advice of writing, and I often used to say, hey, it might be helpful to write, just keep it private you know you don't need to share it with anybody those people who did right seem to adapt and adjust to their loss not necessarily quicker but better than those who didn't have some form of expression whether it was art i don't know some people use art and painting and drawing as expression and I worked for two years with uh, teenagers who had experienced grief for any reason, whether it was a suicide of a parent or a sibling or just a death of a parent. And those kids, we used to get them to draw pictures about their grief. And the kids that really took to the drawing, um, it really helped them. So I think that some form of expression, whether it's writing, whether it's, art whether it's 
poetry. Um, I think it's very healing to do that. And I, I mean, I see my own blog in a way as my narrative therapist. And I believe in the power of writing so much. I went and did a one, I paid for a one week course to become a narrative therapist, never with the, any intention of becoming one, but what the comments on my blog, the people who make comments are almost like a narrative therapist. So sometimes they all might challenge me to go, oh, well, Kate, that's all very well. You feel like that about, I don't know, let's say I've had some changes in my capacity or I've lost some ability. They might, well, that's all right to feel about it like that. Have you thought about feeling like it, seeing it differently? So almost the people who comment on my blog have become my narrative therapist because they challenge me to think differently about how I think. And that's really healthy. That, that's amazing. Um, I mean, I, I can't believe how much time has already gone by. I mean, I could listen to you talk forever, but um, we actually only have a few more minutes left. Oh, really? But it feels like about four minutes. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> yeah. That's what I mean. It just goes by. Um, there's, there's, there's a lot of people out there living with dementia who are apprehensive actually to write because a lot of what you just said about fear of exposure um, or even feel like personally like myself, I don't feel like I'm a writer. Yeah. Um, but in your opinion, what are some of the, well, you already explained what some of the benefits are and some of the uh, disadvantages are of sharing your own experience, but what advice could you give to people like that who might be just a little apprehensive to, to put I, it out? I would say just start writing privately for yourself. And in terms of the therapeutic value of writing, and there is clinical data to back this if you really want it, but the value of writing about how you're feeling about some stressful situation and being diagnosed with dementia is pretty stressful. Uh, one of the real advantages of writing when it's just for yourself is to pick a time every day at the same time. And within a few weeks of doing, and when I was doing this under the uh, advice of a psychologist, the rationale for having it at the same time every day, and I'm always an early riser, so for me it used to be five o'clock in the morning, for other people it might be 10 o'clock at night, is when you're grieving and people don't give credit to how much grief people with dementia go through, when you're grieving, sometimes it can take over your life. If you know that tomorrow at five o'clock in the morning, or tonight at 10 o'clock tonight, you've given yourself five or 10 minutes or 20 minutes, however long you feel like writing or drawing or even just thinking and meditating about it. It allows you to put the difficulty you're facing at this moment on hold until tomorrow or tonight when you know you're gonna write about it. And that discipline of writing. So even those people, who might go, oh, yeah, I like writing, but I'm, I don't want to get into that public space. Just have a handwritten journal or an online Word document. It doesn't have to be public. Um, I absolutely almost guarantee that the expression of feelings, whether it's through art, whether it's through writing, whether it's through poetry, or whether it's talking into a dictaphone that you never, ever give the tape to, will help you um, deal with the stresses of dementia or any other crisis in your life. That's fantastic advice. And, and I truly appreciate you saying that. That's definitely something I could take to heart myself. Um, we really wanted to thank you, Kate, for coming on board with us, um, for allowing our view viewers to get a little bit, learning a little bit about you and, and about how what, what it is to write a blog or even to uh, just put yourself out there. And I know we've been talking a lot about writing and blogging, but for anybody who's watching this, you really get to just look up Kate Swaffer and 
you're going to learn so much about an incredible lady. Every time I turn around to try to figure out where you are, you're in some other part of the world talking in behalf of everybody living with dementia. And we really, really, truly thank you for that. And I'm not having a tattoo. Sorry. No tattoos. <laughs> and no tattoos. Okay. <laughs> but we also wanted to remind folks to please uh, follow Dementia Action Alliance on our um, YouTube channel, subscribe and like us. And also Dementia Alliance International has a, a YouTube channel out there. Please look them up. Yeah, we were in the top 20 this well. year. Woohoo. And that's right. We're voted, uh, what, top 20? In the top 20 YouTube dementia channels, DAI right. was. Yeah. That's I mean, incredible news. So please look up Kate. Uh, please follow us. And uh, we definitely hope to have Kate on again, talking more about all the work that she does to help those of us living with dementia. So thank you all very much and have a great day. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. Connecting our lives to help us survive So we live our time to the fullest we can